Today on episode 96, our Chris Zorich episode of Typical Chicago Fans, we have Sinkers and Floaters, the TCF Sports Minute, our interview with Frank the Tank Fleming, our media recommendations, and the TCF Top 5, our ultimate fast food meal. Let's roll. Hello and welcome to episode 96 of Typical Chicago Fans. It is me, Boomy, on Twitter, at BoomyTCF. Make sure to follow the main page at Typical underscore Chicago. Head to Facebook and Instagram. Type in Typical Chicago Fans. Give those pages a like as well. Head over to the YouTube page. Subscribe there for all of our content in video form. Make sure to subscribe, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts. And follow us on Spotify, Spreaker, Google Podcasts, wherever you find your podcasts. Make sure you follow us there. But make sure to follow the guys that I'm joined with tonight. That is Zach, of course, at TCF, And Maddie at schools underscore zero one. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at 26shirts.com Chicago. Head on over to their website, 26shirts.com slash Chicago, to check out the coolest Chicago sports merchandise around. They've got everything from the shirts you see right here, uh, hats, hoodies, flags, whatever you need. They have it. They're awesome. They help out good causes. What more could you want? Like I said, over to their website, find the products that you love. And at checkout, use promo code typical Chicago fans for 15% off your order. Like I said, they help out good causes. They make great clothes. What more could you ask for? Head over to 26shirts.com slash Chicago. Use promo code typical Chicago fans for 15% off. And we are doing our TCF t-shirt giveaway. We've got two t-shirts to give away from 26 shirts. Let the kids play like you see that Zach has on the screen. If I was a White Sox fan, I would like those a lot, but I'm not. So we're going to give them away. Uh, we have a, a large and an XL. Is that what it is, Zach? Or is it an XL and a 2X? An XL and a 2X. An Take XL. care of the big boys this week. And maybe let's go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The big boys need, to, need some love. So we have an XL and a 2X. And in order to qualify, all you have to do is either reply to the tweet of this podcast, reply to the Facebook post or the Instagram post with hashtag. Send us a new tweet even. Yeah, or a new tweet. As long as you include hashtag SouthsideHitmen, you will be entered in to win the T-shirt. We will do uh, a drawing from a hat on video. No tomfoolery going around. But like I said, 26 shirts. Their shirts are as comfortable as they come. Um, and if you're a Sox fan or just a T-shirt collector, this is the way to go. Like we said, hashtag Southside Hitman on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, you can comment on our posts or create your own new ones. Um, but Make sure you use the hashtag Southside Hitmen to be entered to win one of our two Let the Kids Play 26shirts.com t shirts. Boys, how are we doing? Episode 96. Doing all right. I'm tired of the cold, though, Boomy. Well, this hey, at uh, 5 a.m. Yeah, it's at to get 5 a.m., the wind chill is negative 18 or 28. Negative 28. Shoot me. Un. Believable. That that's it doesn't disturbing. even make sense. It, it doesn't, doesn't. Make sense. That's disturbing. That's just not even. It doesn't even seem like a real number for a no. temperature. Can Boomy? Can I hate to be this way? Can I go right into my sinker? Yes, please do. <laughs> it's temperatures below zero. <laughs> I don't disagree. Anything at all. below Anything. zero. I know. Yes, it's it's cold at zero, but this this is this below zero stuff. This is this isn't for me. It's for the birds. It's yeah, a different kind of cold. It's the cold that like I went to the gym today. I was filling up my car with gas, and I just forgot my gloves at home. And just even using the gas pump and going into the gas station to get a drink, uh, it took a legit fifteen to twenty minutes for my hands to finally like I couldn't feel either of them. And as I've complained about many times, my car doesn't have heat, so. Uh, my toes are frozen. It's just, this is ungodly. We should No one should be allowed to live in negative temperatures, Zach. I don't hate that at all. It sucks. And then you Every add in the- single year I say, what am I doing? But look at me now. Still here. <laughs> and look at you in a year. You'll probably still be here. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah. <laughs> what are we doing? Matt, do you have a sinker for us this week? 
I do, I do. And uh, originally, I was going to go the, the easy way out with Valentine's Day. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go another easy way out, though, and that's chores. And specifically doing dishes. And even more specifically, it's taking dishes out of a dishwasher. Because, guys, I sliced my thumb tonight. <laughs> Pretty good. Got a good chunk out of it. There was a nice flap of skin that I uh, had to cut off. Wife thought I needed stitches. We're going to not go to a, an emergency room today for this one, though. All I did, though, I was taking some plates out of the dishwasher rack, slid my hand down, and all of a sudden I didn't notice, but I was going right on top of a, a fork, caught the edge oh, of a fork, went right down my thumb. A fork. So, not even a yeah. knife. A fork. So not even a knife. You have the sharpest nice, fork solid from fork. Me? Hey, man. Uh, Manny, can, would, I, would you eat? can I say something you may not like? Sure. It's tough to to talk about an injury in your dishwasher. It is. <laughs> hey, but that's the kind of guy I am. I'm a multifaceted father and husband, Zach. You're you know, busy. So, it You're takes busy. a village to run a house. Is that no? It's, it's <laughs> to, a village to, to run a dishwasher. Pick. Yeah, you to should, run a dishwasher. You should have, you should have made the story like I was doing the dishes. Well, I was taking them out after I did them. How about that? <laughs> uh, no, I was just uh, trying to be a decent husband. Occasionally, here and there, I do that. It's Valentine's Day. Um, so. Yeah, see, but the key, Zach, is not Valentine's Day. It's do it the day before. So do the dishes the day before. Pulling them out, boom, fork through the fork through the thumb. I swear to God, it felt like I caught bone at one point. That that it just like it was very very painful. I'll say that. And uh, blood a lot, but we're good to go. Wife uh, wife patched me up pretty quick. And, Matt, do you like sit in your garage with like a grinder and just create the sharpest forks possible? Um, uh, no. How are your what, forks what? sharp? That's a hell of a question. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Only um, the best. I will say we probably the advice I would give anybody and, and advice we got when we got married was uh, when you do your wedding registry is register for as expensive shit as you can find. Like, because people do either what they do is you, what you really want is cash. So if you register for stuff that's too expensive, you end up getting what you want is cash. If you get somebody that's crazy and ends up buying the expensive stuff, like really nice silverware and really sharp forks, that's how you end up with a stabbed thumb. So <laughs> we got a nice set of forks and uh, there we are. I'm not a I'm not a fork spender. I'll put it that way, though. Just so we know, just so we all know, this is something Boomy would do. A hundred percent. That is something. I hundred percent. I'm I'm much more like Boomy. I think uh, when it comes to unexplainable injuries uh, than not <laughs> like Boomy. I'll put it that way. I could do a whole segment just on dumb injuries, and I could next even do week. A- here we are, TCF top three unexplainable injuries led by Boomy and myself. Yeah, and I could just do them from last summer because I had <laughs> quite a few just from last yeah, summer. Like, yeah, we had a couple last summer for you. Like you bashed your head like on a table or something at one point, didn't you? No, I what bashed my cart. head on a golf cart. Golf cart. There we go. A golf cart. Even better. Yeah, I was driving. God. It wasn't even something I could blame on someone else. But someone else who is in a, a little bit of hot water, uh, kind of like Maddie with the injuries. This guy's in for kind of hot water. My sinker this week is Joseph Davis of Orange County, Florida. Um, and Joseph has an arrest warrant out for himself uh, because he stole an engagement and wedding ring from one of his girlfriends and used them to propose to his other girlfriend. <laughs> That's um, efficient. That is efficiency, which there gets a monkey wrench even thrown into said love triangle because uh, the engagement ring wasn't even one that Joseph gave to his girlfriend that he is accused of stealing it from. It was from an engagement of hers in the past or her other boyfriend. So it might not even be a triangle. This could be a love square. Um, I don't know what's going on here, but um, he has stolen his girlfriend's rings and given them to his other girlfriend. And now he has an arrest warrant out. So Joseph Davis is in some hot water this week down in. Who is? Who would you rather be running from, three women or the police? Oh, I'll, I, I I just turned myself into the police. This guy hell, would be begging no for a second. Like a woman scorned, hell hath no fury like three women scorned. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Is toast. 
Yeah, I, I'd be begging the judge to just just throw me away yeah. or send me to a different state well, because yeah. he is not going to have a good time when he gets himself out of jail. But no, nope. uh, no. Was this outside of uh, Florida? What was the uh, best, most likely place that something like this would happen? Go. Ohio, Missouri, Utah. Nah. Oh, <laughs> good play, Maddie. <laughs> good play. That is correct. I will move over to my floater, and it's completely different, uh, completely not even on topic. But the NIU women's basketball team got to give a quick shout-out. They've been five games in a row, um, come from behind win on Saturday over Buffalo. Currently the number two seed in the MAC, sitting at uh, – or no, I'm sorry, they're 9-3 and three in conference, um, turning things around as a former women's – Husky manager. Good to see them uh, having some success and hopefully conference tournaments go on as, as planned and they can knock off the Bowling Green Lady Falcons and be able to get to see the NIU women's in the NCAA tournament. So that's my floater this week. Gotta love it. My floater. Because it couldn't be the men's because they are ungodly. Mm, yeah. Uh, my floater, Tom Brady. Just seems like he's just living life. He has seven Super Bowls. He's just the, they don't even care about the Super Bowl trophy anymore. They're it's like, ch- hey, it's not that they don't, it, I, I guess it's not that they don't care about it. It's just it's so normal to them that it's they're throwing it from boat to boat. What just, was <laughs> that? That was awesome. It's a beautiful like celebration. Well, amazing guys. time. He drank too much. Uh, what kind of tequila was it? Avocado tequila, he said. Never heard of that before. I think he's making it up. I bet because you there's got to be avocado. I bet you there is avocado tequila. I don't. I, it's, I think it was just a play on the. I know, but I bet that. you there is. I'm just saying. Yeah, you're pro- we maybe need to find this in taste review. But it just seems oh, like I, I don't know some of the uh, some of the other Super Bowls. It just seemed like he was having more fun this year. Yeah, he finally like. Like you said, Zach, you finally feel like he relaxed a little bit and was able to celebrate this and enjoy it. And I mean, they're out on boats. He's drunk. He's chucking the trophy around. He just, he just seems like he finally enjoys the the fruits of his labor. Totally agree with totally. that. I mean, this was a guy who, when he walked out, whether he was that drunk or not, and there's a video where he was like being carried out or stumbling out or whatever. Like, I don't, I think that was played up a little bit yeah. for, for the camera, for sure. but because sure. he can't, because he can play it up now, it's not like, it's like this thing where he's got to be the, you know, Captain America, kind yep. of blah, blah, blah. He's in Tampa. Cut he's, loose in a little bit. he's in the twilight of his career. It's just like, whatever guys, I want another one. What are you guys going to say at this point? Yeah. He's like I'm 43. I don't. I don't care. Yeah. I, I'm a champion. I, I, I'm the best winner in NFL know, history. Don't know how anybody can can go after him at this point in terms of uh, who he is as a quarterback, where he where he's and where he stands on the lexicon of quarterback yeah. in, in history. To literally just pick a random team and be like, I'm going to take them to the Super Bowl with the help of some of my buddies. Like it was a useless team last year. Yeah. Completely irrelevant. Definition of mediocrity. Completely irrelevant uh, franchise for the last decade. Yes. Mm -hmm. 2001, two, maybe. Couldn't agree more. Matty, what is your floater this week? My floater, I'm going to go back to the NHL. um, You guys know I like hockey a lot. And uh, this year, the the NHL outdoor game is uh, at Lake Tahoe. And I think. some things like that really could be uh, a hell of a way to keep, to pique some interest in the, in the game. Um, it's not on the lake. Uh, the, the, the rink is right on the edge of the water. Uh, basically they kind of got um, like an outdoor stadium set up a little bit. Uh, should be a pretty cool game to watch on TV. The backdrop's going to be insane. Never been to Lake Tahoe, but it looks gorgeous. Every uh, picture, every camera you've ever seen from uh, you know all the videos and things like that that are coming out about it too. But it's a good point. You know, I've never seen a it, bad it, picture of Tahoe. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, you really just haven't. It's like you, you, you could it's beautiful, like, right? It's so it's it's one of those things too where it just opens up. You know, what else could you do? Could you when where and where and what lake could you start playing a game on straight on the water? Because there's yep. going to be lakes out there that you can do it in. 
and whatever, you know, whatever, if they're in Canada or whatever it's going to take, you can play quality outdoor hockey um, for a uh, for a game at the NHL level. I'm not saying playing, you know, playoff games and the like, but let's go. Let's take the uh, Winter Classic up and turn it up a notch. Want to add another wrinkle in and play on Lake Titicaca. That'd be fun. <laughs> You're unbelievable, <laughs> Boomer. I- out there. Season tickets for that one. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, with that being said, hockey on the mind, let's move into the TCF Sports Minute on a different side of town from the Blackhawks. The Cubs have signed or brought back, re-signed Jake Arietta. Got to get your guys' thoughts on Jake Arietta <sighs> coming to the north side. I just don't really understand it. Um since Jake Arrieta has left the Cubs, he has not been over 500. I think he has two 500 seasons and one under 500 season. But just uh, hasn't been good either. Hasn't yeah. been very good. I know it's only like, what, $6 million, $7 million. Um, And the thing is, it's just like, why would we just keep Lester for that? Like, what, what are we doing with this team? Are we trying to win? Why did we get rid of you, Darvish? What, what are we... Are we try? I, I just don't really get the yeah. plan of what's going on here. Well, it's like the rant I went on a couple weeks ago. It's like you wait, you know, a month and decide you're going to scrap money, and then a month later you're like, wait, we actually have some. But so let's bring back a how old ever? What is he? Thirty six. Let's bring back Jake Arrieta th- at thirty six. I love it's, Jake Arrieta. Yeah, I, I'm not. Yeah, that's the greatest money. seasons that a pitcher will maybe ever have. Yeah, and yeah, one of the probably season and a half. That's true. World, World like, Series, but it's one of those things. It, it, just you can't pay somebody off of memories. Yeah, hundred no, percent. The one thing I will say about it is like it's one of those things. Like if somebody just asks you the question flat out: Do you want Jake Arrieta on the Cubs? Yes or no? In a vacuum? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I love. Really I would. I love it. I mean, I like I love the being guy. with the so, team. Yeah, I'm sure. If there's a spot for him to get like a, a fifth spot in the rotation or. Maybe, uh, you know, if he somehow – some I saw somebody on Twitter suggest uh, uh, him as like a, a back-end uh, arm. And that interests me a little bit just because of the stuff that he has. And, yeah. You know, his demeanor is is very, very uh, – But we don't really have you'd like to see in the that, bullpen. We don't really have that option with this with this current – No, I agree. I you know what I mean? It's an interesting idea. So, but Would like that I be said, nice in the with vacuum, a rotation led by you, um, Darvish? Right. <laughs> That's what Absolutely. I was saying to Zach today. It's like, if he's your four or five starter, I'm all in. The fact he's going to have to play the two or three, I'm, I'm not crazy about. I just even if he's not that. even your five, even I if just he's don't just a it. swing arm. It's just like, yeah. it's not the kind of guy you want to rely on to have to win games for. It's like, it's he's a he's a guy you want. Anything he gives you is a bonus. Mm-hmm. That's where you want him to be. Like you said, it's, he, nothing, it's nothing against Jake Arrieta. It, it's just not, against dude. the situation. Yo. Know? That's the kind of guy who has like uh, the 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 free dinner in Chicago till the end of time type pass. Yeah, so no. th- this is a guy that's on the you know that 2015 the, the season, Church of Jake, dude. It, it, that's a real thing. That 2015 season was so, was, was it 15? Right? Absolutely legendary that year. 15 and like half of 16. But that 15 was the year. 15 like, was the year he went nuts. Had insane stats. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's just frustrating because, like you said, we just can't put our finger on the pulse of where that the Cubs was. Um, the outfielder they signed. Oh, Jake Marcinic. Yeah. From uh, he was with Houston for a couple of years too. Yeah, he's basically he's just brought in to fill Albert Amora's yeah. backup role. He's a he's a he's a bunch guy. Yeah. 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 Good be to see. We got spring training coming up here uh, at the end of the month, so at least something to look forward to. Uh, you know, it's our first weekend without football, so um, at least a little it's something to look forward to on the north side. And obviously, the south side, they're going to be, uh, you know, pining for a division title. But um, a team that's playing right now and playing surprisingly well, um, the Blackhawks pick up a win tonight. They beat Columbus three to two they in overtime. Love overtime. Love they it. love overtime. And, uh, you know, they drop a, a tough one the other night 
Um, should have beat Columbus. They were up four to two, I believe, then up five to four late in the third, yeah. and lose six to yeah. five. That one's that. I, I, Matt, you can tell me if I'm wrong, but that just screams like a team that doesn't have the experience. And I think Kaner said it in his post game interview. He's like, we just got to learn how to finish those kinds of games. And but that's that's what you're gonna get with a young team that is. It's um, nice to be able to see that they can together. stay in games like that. That's that's what you get when like outside of like what Duncan Keith gives you and just a straight up leadership role. And I want to talk about him in a minute. Don't let me forget my thought on Duncan Keith, guys. So when I start losing track of stuff, I want to talk about Duncan Keith in a minute. But like when Ian Mitchell is really ultimately like your most talented defenseman as a rookie, and like that dude is going to be a stud. Ian Mitchell is going to be an absolute. You, you will see his. He's going to be every bit of like the Seabrook, the Keith, the, the Jalmerson. He's going to be here for ten years, and he's going to play a very, very high level defense for the Hawks. So that that's one guy. But when he is your best, most talented defenseman, you're going to be liable to a game against a talented team like Columbus and give up two late goals, it's, especially when you got a goalie like Kevin Lincoln in the same situation, showing some talent, showing that he's got some skills, still has some holes in his game. And we're seeing that. And, it, you know, he doesn't have a ton of experience. He's, but he's, you know, he's won them some games too. That can't be denied. So it's one of those things, you know, you're going to get these kind of nights occasionally where, where you lose a game like that. Then you're going to get a night like you did tonight on on Saturday when they when they played that same Columbus team, fought back down two to one, tied up the game, went to overtime. Then you know Kane and Debrinka get a little nice two on one, pound a game winner in overtime, and all of a sudden they beat beat the team they just lost to. So that's tough to see in overtime is Kane and Debrinka on the same line. It's where you, it's where this team does have an advantage because let's not let's. Not pulling any punches here. They are a left tailing and team than a lot of teams that are oh, yeah. performing right now. They don't have a ton of talent. What they do have is a bunch They're missing of guys two that are of their best their players. Off. They're basically having all it's all guys who are playing their asses off and a lot of guys fighting for jobs in the NHL. And it's not a bad thing to have, especially on a young team. Because they don't they're not gonna quit. They're not gonna be afraid of anybody. They're just gonna say they're not supposed to beat anybody. So what do you have to lose at this point? So that's why you're gonna get performances against a Columbus team. Who is good? Who does have holes, though? And you can go out and exploit some of these, beat some of these good teams. And that's what they're doing. Matt, with that being said, is it time to maybe I, – I know it's early and it's only February and, you know, they're in second place right now in the division. Is it time to maybe lay off a little bit of the, the Jeremy Colleton um, criticism, we, criticism we've given him over the last couple of years? Uh, Jeremy Colleton's uh, had a fantastic season as a coach. Yeah, it's mind blowing how much better he's been. I think in this, they're, yeah, they're he said penalty, he's they're doing this all very good. Their power play has been very good, and they're winning games in overtime. And a lot of that's due to coaching putting you in good spots. So let's not let's not face the facts here. You got to look at that. I don't believe Stan Bowman's done the job that he needs to do to be able to put together like a franchise roster that can really continually win year after year after year. But what they've done this year is putting out a team that's gonna. They're causing problems, and nobody With wants two to of their them. better players out. Yeah, yeah. Not, unfortunately, probably not going to play this season, which really sucks because. If but you that's, get a dangerous, like, that's why Colleton is doing such a good job, is he's doing this without his two of his best players. Absolutely, and what the other thing is, you're getting a lot of experience for guys who might not be playing some of these heavy minutes too. So, yep. you know, like P. S. Suter, that dude is going to be a very, very good NFL <laughs> or NFL NHL player. Kurashov, another good player, dude. Some of these guys are really, really young and playing good hockey. It's like it's it's refreshing because I was really worried about going to this team. The going to the season was a roster that just had so many holes is what it looked like. And it seems like what they needed to happen is actually happening a lot. Yeah. So that's kind of cool to see. What was your Duncan Keith uh tangent you wanted me to oh, you up? Dude, the other night he was uh I want to say it was in the Columbus game, but it very well might have been the game before that. But it was it was tight, late in the third, tie game, and he's Duncan Keith was over in Lincoln and ear in between a stoppage, and you could just just tell he was talking to him for no less than thirty seconds, just telling him exactly what to look for. What you know, he was having that conversation that you can see that a guy that's been in the league for fifteen plus years, who's seen everything at every level of the game is given to a goalie who's, you know, just coming into his own and just coming into the league. So I think when you you cannot sell short what what a guy like Duncan Keith and when Taves comes back and what Kane, you know, can do for these young players. So that's the other thing about this team is, you know, 
they didn't necessarily have some of the name, you know, the high level prospects that some of the other organizations have had. Some of them, you know, like all the you know media publications will rank all the prospect rankings. The Hawks have been in the you know the ten to twenty range uh, last couple of years, which for a team that hasn't been making the playoffs and making deep runs, you don't like to be there. But they're getting production. So are, are they outliving those those rankings? That's what you you know. Is it because you have veterans like these guys? I don't know. Can't he hurt. still plays an unreal amount of minutes. Duncan too, Keith and, and is he, an he absolute leads by maniac. example. Duncan Keith is an absolute slam dunk first ballot Hall of Famer. Like that dude is unbelievable. And I know, you know, I'll go off for uh, for days about Kane and, and Taves. Duncan Keith is still the most important piece of this run that they've had. Yeah. Far none. Can't disagree with that. I mean, you're seeing it right now. Like we've we've been talking about, you know, it's a, a team that is overachieving, and you know, hopefully they can you know, keep it up. And and like I said, they're in second place right now. We don't have a ton to complain about. Yeah. Um, let's move over to our partners at the United Center, the Bulls. Um, a very sporadic. They're having their moments. They they pick up their wins here and there. Um, I think they're sitting at, I want to say, 10 and 15 right now. Um, but the biggest question I have for you guys is there's the big push on social media right now. And I got to ask you, is Zach Levine an all-star? Yes. Okay. I think with the season he is having, he is an all-star right now. He's the leader. out. I mean, offensive-wise, he's mm-hmm. the leader. There. And, I mean, he's I think he's sixth in the NBA in scoring. I might be a little – he's tied for sixth in the NBA in scoring with Giannis – um, Jokic and um, Kawhi and Tatum right behind him. So I think it's, you know, he's right up there with Luca and Dame Lillard. So I would agree. I, I, he got snubbed last, or was it two years ago? Maybe last year, I don't remember. Um, but no, I, I think he deserves it. What about you, Maddie? Uh, yeah, I think I would. I would say he's an all star. He's put up all star numbers. He's he's been the you know one of the best offensive players in the league this year from a, you know, just pure statistical perspective. You can't yep. deny that. Um, I'm, I'm going to reserve my other thoughts on Zach Levine still because I'm just not sold other areas. But When I was looking up stats on Zach Levine, one of the tough ones I saw is that he's sixth in the NBA in scoring, but I believe he is also sixth in – he's fifth in the NBA in turnovers a game. But he's also, I think, eleventh in the NBA in minutes, so that might. Those have to be the most out of whack, like uh, efficiency and analytics <laughs> yeah. that you can possibly have, like because he's Average so bad. Twenty-eight a game and almost four turnovers a game. And so bad defensively though, too, and then so good offensively. So the numbers get skewed there too. I don't know, man. I, yeah, I like, love watching this Bulls team. They're fun yes. to watch. But what worries me is Wendell Carter hurt again. Lori Markinen hurt again. It just seems like the injuries are just it, these these younger guys getting injured a lot. Let me throw and I know like obviously you know from a trade standpoint, who knows what could actually line up from a salary cap and all that stuff. But who would you say is the Lakers' third best player? The Kuzma, maybe. Yeah, probably Kyle Kuzma. Maybe I Dennis would, Schroeder would, lately. If, if yeah, I like Schroeder a lot, but. If I'm the Lakers, I'm giving up Kuzma for Zach Levine in an absolute heartbeat. And oh, you think yeah. about what a guy like Levine would do, like having LeBron to create and then Anthony Davis to be, you know, take <laughs> such a focus away. Like a guy he's like He's going to suck in all the defense into the if middle. He's, he's, the, he's, third he's, option, kick, if yeah. he's the third option. Kick, yeah. He's the third option on like a contender. Holy hell, like he could be dangerous as hell. Could you imagine LeBron, AD, and Zach Levine on the just, same team? And obviously, like, the, the cap is not going to line up for that to happen or anything like that. But I just think, you know, in a situation like that, that's where Zach Levine can be, you know, one of those parts on an NBA, you know, on a championship team. Absolutely. He can't be the one, though, in my opinion. I, mean, I can't get over that fact. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I agree. I think, and you have to. I think if you do your due diligence as a front office, you've got to listen to those those phone calls and you know listen to the possibility of that happening. And I'm not saying I'm pining for it, but you definitely have to to take a listen. But like you said, the Blackhawks playing well, 
in second place in the division. The Bulls at 10 and 15. I think they're in the 10 spot right now. Um, you know, it, at least this beats the hell out of where we were at this point last year where both teams were hovering right around the bottom. So at least there's something to watch in our time between football so and true. baseball. So, uh, but we have an amazing interview with a reoccurring guest, uh, Frank the Tank Fleming. Uh, thanks so much to Frank for coming on. Uh, so let's go ahead and throw it to our interview with Frank the Tank Fleming. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome back a recurring guest to the show. If you follow anything related to Barstool Sports, you know this guy. He's the host of the Allow Me to Be Frank podcast and the operator of the coolest sports website around, sportsecyclopedia.com. You can find him on Twitter at NJTank99. He is the one, the only Frank the Tank. Frank, how are we doing today, my man? Uh, just dealing with this cold weather, and I'm tired of it. Just... I'm I'm looking forward to the next day. Where I'm not even looking at not even so much spring. Just a nice day when it's 50 degrees. <laughs> Amen. That, that will just feel so good. It, it it seems right now it seems like a pipe dream, but <sighs> you know, it hopefully we'll be here sooner rather than later. So. I mean, uh, this is this has been a brutal stretch of weather. Yeah, I, and you guys I, had I, uh, the blizzard too, didn't you? Yeah, we had the blizzard. Then uh, on uh, Christmas on uh, Super Bowl night, uh, they had another eight inches. I of course got in just in time <laughs> from uh, going from West Virginia to Detroit. By the way, West Virginia was like it was like almost fifty in West Virginia. How it was the, good. How was the private it's jet? Balmy. Frank? The f- private jet was fun. That's awesome, especially you don't have to go through any of the hassle of like, oh, security and stuff. Just, they just load the plane, lo- load and go. Load no other way to travel now. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. You never want to go on anything else. But, Frank, speaking of nicer, warmer weather, uh, that brings baseball to my mind. So what are your realistic expectations as a Mets fan with the, the offseason that you guys have had, the new uh, ownership? You know, we're, we're, we're just cursed. Though I got a funny feeling. I got a funny feeling. We're going to take your dirt baseman. Oh, you think you're really? going to take Chris Bryant? Yeah. Oh. What's it going to take? What are we going to get think, back? What do we get? Do we get anything good? Uh, well, you're going to get J.D. Davis. 877 runs now. Who the, who the Mets just don't trust. Yeah. Any uh, prospects? Uh, I'm going to uh, need more uh, than J.D. Davis. Uh, uh, yeah, I was going to say the same thing, Matty. Uh, the, you guys might get the... Uh, we might uh, take uh, Craig Krimble off your hands. Okay. Well, that's worth something. You guys though. might get the gift, the wonderful gift of Jerry's Familia. And, uh, might as well give us Diaz, too, then, right? <laughs> I've heard uh, Peterson could go into trade, and that's the one guy I don't really want to see go into trade. It's been a lot of rumors about him getting moved, and that would seem like a situation that would would love it. The Mets are trying to win right now, and uh, it's definitely I think a good fit. You think they're going to want to extend extend him while they trade for him? I don't know about that. I just know that the Mets just had uh, have been heating up talks for their baseman, and that is a guy who's been on the trade market for the whole off season, and nothing has really happened. <sighs> I, w- I would have thought they'd be in the market for Contreras before they uh, to picked up McCann, but you know, Contreras seemed like a perfect fit for them going into the offseason. McCann's better. McCann's better defensively. Yeah. Well, that's the Mets. That's actually what the Mets actually were looking for. McCann's a good defensive catcher. Yeah, yeah we're looking I, for I, a... for the stick though. Well, it's supposed to Contreras has still got him there. Yeah, but the Mets were actually looking for a defensive catcher after. Just the horrific horrificness of uh, uh, Wilson, <laughs> Wilson Ramos last year. <laughs> <laughs> so were, you, were you were you want Real or? Muto? Were you want Real Muto with him too or no? Nah, well, you know, Real Muto is going to be a guy who has like one or two more good years, and then the, the last four years, three years of that contract are going to be look pretty bad. I feel like that's going to be a lot of. A lot of new baseball contracts are going to look that way. Yeah. For these ones that are extended so long. There was a guy last year that tagged up from second base. The ball got to uh, Wilson Ramos, and he he just did this type of tag. 
Oh. So everyone was uh, running on Wilson Ramos. Wilson Ramos <laughs> last year, 87 steals against, no catches. Oh, my God. <laughs> Wilson Ramos, 27 plays at the plate, no tags. <laughs> oh, my God. There was a guy, that, what you call it? There was a guy that actually stopped and started running back, and then Wilson Ramos dropped the ball and tried to pick the ball up. <laughs> yes, I remember that. <laughs> Yeah, he's uh, he's off the toil away in Detroit now. So at least you don't have well, to worry yeah, about Ramos last year hit into a seven, hit into a what's him call? He hit a ball to the right field. Did you know the Mets finally got a hit and uh, won the game? And Wilson Ramos was walking first and was thrown out by the uh, center fielder. <laughs> oh my god! And he, he had that look on his face like just like like and he's running. He's doing that smile like like the, the like the sloth and uh. Uh, zoology. <laughs> oh man! Wang, wang, wang. Wang. Wilson Ramos last year takes him nine point two seconds to go from first uh, home to first. Oh my god! <laughs> he hit a ball off the top of the wall and was almost thrown out by the right fielder. <laughs> He is not fast, you would say. No, it's safe to say you're not too upset that he's gone. So, uh, so but you guys got, go to the playoffs. Uh, call uh, during that brief time that uh, uh, Billy Hamilton was on the Mets. Yo, Billy Hamilton actually passed him on the bases. This <laughs> Billy Hamilton is, is is the dumbest motherfucker, and he also got passed on the bases once by uh, what you would call Ahmad Rosario. Oh my god, not yeah. Really in fact, any... Ahmed Rosario was on confidence. first base, and uh, Wilson Ramos was on third, and he got passed going home. <laughs> That's surprising. <laughs> Ahmed Rosario was on first base. <laughs> oh man! In fact, they actually timed it. They said uh, a 98-year-old woman <laughs> that went uh, that had 84 strokes actually beat Ray Olson Rambles in a foot race. Oh my! <laughs> that is, that is, oh. That's wild, Frank. They actually they, they actually had molasses that was frozen. <laughs> And turned it upside down, and the bottle was empty by the time Wilson Rambles got to first base. <laughs> I've never oh, heard that and, and when he tags, he literally does look like that sloth. He goes, look at that, look on face. <laughs> oh. Hey, what's well, what's your thoughts? They they brought Lindor in at least. At least you got like uh, another professional. Yeah, but you know how the Mets you know, the Mets stud. lost. Something bad, will, something bad will happen. <laughs> I also didn't know there was a candy called Lindor candy, Frank. <laughs> Lindor talkers? Never heard of that. Never heard of that until I'd seen you. Oh, very good. The Top yak or something with it. And I still don't understand why this thing won't fucking process already. Oh, the YouTube. <laughs> the YouTube. YouTube you know, is it, it, it's like technology is is at war with me. Especially with this well, cold sw- weather. Let's switch. Let's switch to one of your other uh, one of your other passions in, in in New York City, the Jets. Is it is it time? <laughs> is it smart? Is it uh, is it ready Jets. to make the move? I'm a Dolphin fan. I hate the fucking oh, that's Jets. Right. Jets I'm sorry. Are I the Jets totally are forgot you're a Dolphins joke. fan. All right. Well, is, the what's Jets your actually make on, the Chicago Bears look competent. What's your thoughts <laughs> on the Dolphins going making the move for uh, for Deshaun Watson? Well, if they can do it, do it. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily give up on uh, Tua, but if it's Deshaun Watson, I'd give up on him. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the same for a lot of teams. Yeah, I don't. Like, I've seen the Dolphins in. Trades for quarterbacks are they already ready to give up on Tua? Do they? What's up? It's with not that? giving up on Tua. You're just going. You're you're getting Deshaun Watson. It's not. Giving well, up yeah, on I Tua. know. I, I've I've seen it in other spots too. It's just I I don't I don't know. I was a little confused by it, but yeah, for Deshaun Watson, yes. And like I said, the Bears, 
they're going to end up getting there's, – there's so many quarterbacks out there right now, and they're going to end up with nobody. They're going to end up with nobody. The Bears. Okay, Patrick. here we go. Hey, it's gonna be a Nagy hero. Let's see how they want to play. Yes, right. That right. I'm going back to the, the the past. We're gonna run the same plays that uh, George Hallis run in 1940. It's gonna work. Unbelievable. And and it's nothing's gonna change until the team is sold, and the team will and, never be sold. Okay, everybody, we're gonna run it up the middle. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Every time. And then I love that play. They finally did so, did a nice tricky play, and then the ball right in right in the hands of Mims. That, uh, oh my! That, God. Yes, he and he dropped it. it. He dropped Venus, it. Venus de Milo could have caught that ball. <laughs> I well, I've never been so. But what did it matter? They weren't going to win anything, anyways. But still, I can. The luck of the Bears is unbelievable. It's like Frank. They make their own luck. I, I mean, I, mean uh, I, I know Virginia McCaskey is 98 years old. By the way, that's who uh, beat uh, Wilson Reynolds in the foot race. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know she's 98 years old. Uh, what are her sons doing? What are the grandsons doing? They, 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 they always just, they always just seem to be like, like just like to, to just. Hey, Fra- Frank, Frank, it's called living off the family teat. <laughs> yeah. They're suckling at that nipple, man. Yeah, I, I know they don't really want to. The Hallis family doesn't really want to sell. They, that's no. their only business. They can't they, sell. They, well, they can, but you know they would be money? so rich. Four billion. No. Four billion. They, 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 they could get four billion for the Bears. Yeah, that's that family. Everyone yeah, says but that family would piss away four billion real quickly just in litigation. <laughs> they all hate each other. I understand, but like everyone always says, oh, it's their only way of income. Well, it wouldn't be if they sold the thing for billions of dollars. Yeah, and you, you could quickly turn that around. I, I, I mean, it, Virginia McCaskey doesn't seem like she knows what's actually going on. She doesn't. It, she probably doesn't even know what day of the week it is. <laughs> probably not. And and, and, her, and her sons don't. Her sons just look just completely befuddled, befu- befallen, and foolish. Who is that? They're not. Who Not was a football it, fan. Ed McCaskey that ran it. It was like the. Uh... Uh, Ed was the first one. Then George. George is the one that runs it now. Uh, Mike Mike McCaskey ran in the early and mid 90s and he ran it into the ground. Mike McCaskey was the worst one of them all. I mean, it. it I mean, the, 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 the Bears just feel like a, a team which has been just hibernating forever now. What's your take on Art Ross then? Like uh, being a Dolphins fan, uh, uh, that ownership group, and, and, you know, is it, are you happy with what they've done for uh, for that organization? You know, it looks like he's finally started, uh, found his way. He finally put some good people in there. Got to like Flores. I love Flores. Yeah, Flores is Flores looks like he knows what he's doing. Yeah, for sure. And that's why the Bears, who have Ted Phillips running the organization, or running the team, who has no idea, uh, they, they don't have. We don't have football people running a football organization. It makes Ted Phillips no is an absolute sense. moron. Makes no sense to me. But enough with the Bears; it's making me sad. Uh, Frank, we haven't talked to you in a while. How has it been since you went full time with Barstool? I've seen you on uh, the Yak. Uh, you were doing out to Detroit. You were at. Um, you got rough and rowdy with uh, you were getting in the head of Jose Canseco. How's it been? It's been fun. Uh, hopefully, uh, sooner or later, I'll get more travel experience, more uh, go more places. I know you said you want to hit the fifty states. Yes, that would be awesome. That'd be awesome. Of anyone at Barstool to send out to the fifty states, I feel like Frank is the guy because you know. I feel like Frank, you know something about every state or like any place you go, and you. You yeah. just you have that wealth of knowledge, yeah. you know. What's your current number at? It's like sixteen states. Okay. Okay. So you still got some work to do, though. Yes. <laughs> and, well, what, you, um, and that's including the two I added last week in West Virginia and Michigan. Oh yeah, you said with the uh, how was the how was the uh, Super Bowl? Super Bowl uh, ended up only being a half. Yeah. So you guys got to do some live yeah, bets. The uh, the first half it, 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 the system wasn't working, but uh, 
<laughs> live betting. Oh, geez. It's a roller coaster. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 and I, and I suck at it. <laughs> it's, it's a tough thing. I mean, I did the same thing as, as most people did. The Chiefs. You just thought, when were they going to make that comeback? That's an easy live bet. And then they just could not get back in the game. No, they just didn't. They do just uh, Eric. The loss of Eric Fisher was was tough. Huge. That was yeah. That turned out to be a way bigger loss than anybody. I mean, obviously, you know, losing Fisher is everybody knows it's big. But at the end of the day, it's like they're still the Chiefs' offense. They should be able to get something going. And I mean, it just never ever happened um yeah but speaking of your weekend last yeah. weekend frank what was uh what was it feeling like uh to see jose canseco get knocked out by billy that had to be one of those uh one of those memorable moments that you've had oh at, at it was well deserved it was well deserved because you know jose canseco is just a total just piece of shit and you know that that's kind of unfair to say that actually because uh that's that's offensive to feces <laughs> I saw you had all of his buddies with you, uh, ringside. Yeah, yeah, the the the, uh, the, the rat gang. <laughs> yeah, that was. Well, was he really like he wasn't allowing you to to be? You really that much in his head? I must have been. He didn't would let me go anywhere near him. He wanted me away. He didn't let me go back into his uh his uh, staging area to do a little interview. I, I cause we were we were watching it over at my house, and that was that was. And awesome. I was and I was planning to do it uh, extra running style, oh. <laughs> asking him about his baseball career, <laughs> and I, it, it, and then I was going to do like the uh, the Chris Farley thing. <laughs> do you remember when you got hit in the head? <laughs> yeah. You know that was funny when you played that fly ball off your forehead out of or to over the fence. Yep, uh, you definitely yep. own you know space in in Jose's head. You listening to the part of my take interview, you definitely own some uh, property there, Frank. He he, that guy talk about a loose cannon. Oh, that Casico is a nut nut house. And there's no way he actually runs his Twitter because <laughs> some of that stuff on there was unbelievable. But they said Frank, I think when you do your fifty states. That you should stop at his car wash and uh, just maybe see what he's up to. <laughs> <laughs> his head a little bit. Where is that? Is the car wash in Vegas? Working Thanks. at the car wash. Working <laughs> at the car wash, yeah. Maddie, you got some uh, rapid Yeah, let's do uh, – Frank, uh, the show let's, here let's with do a couple rapid-fire questions. Get to let our uh, listeners get to know you a little bit better. I'm just going to ask some random uh, random questions. Give us give us your thoughts. Give us your take on it. What's your favorite fast food restaurant? Hmm. <sighs> I like Wendy's food the best. Although their Great their choice. Service, their, their customer service sometimes is – leaves a lot to be desired. <laughs> I would food. concur with that. Yes. What, which one's got the best customer service? Then a little spin off of that. You know McDonald's, maybe McDonald's, Chick Fil A. I've thought Taco Chick -fil -A. Bell had decent, decent service as well. Yeah, Taco Bell service is pretty good. All right, well, let's switch it up. What's your uh, favorite musician or band? I don't know. Really? Yeah. Uh, we, we know you've got Velvet Pipes on your own, so I figure you have to have some inspiration somewhere. <laughs> Maybe Queen. Queen's pretty good, I guess. That's Very good choice. choice. Very Another good choice. Good. What's your favorite sports movie? Mm. Miracle. Oh, love it. Wasn't good expecting one. that. That's a good choice. So. It's a good one. It's relatively recent too. I know, being the the, the e cyclopedia guy, I mean, you've, you've obviously. Uh, History is in your uh, it's in your DNA. So yeah, but they saying. did the uh, they did the story of the, the 1980 uh, team so well. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's something to be said for that too. When when you nail it like that. Um, all right, so, uh, back to music a little bit. We know you like to sing. We know you like to parody songs a little bit. Which is your favorite song? Which is your go-to song to parody if you needed to pick one? Mm. Depends on the mood I'm in. I guess yeah. <laughs> I, I love mix it, it, mix I it love, up a little bit. Yeah, whatever pops in the head. It's... 
Were you thinking of those songs during Django? You don't see on the limited fly, J- or did you? Were you just doing that? Like, did you get you plan all those stuff? Or was it something like you listened to in the morning and it just got stuck in your head? Or it's on the fly. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes that is what happens. Yeah, it's something I get stuck in my head. Not limited to a genre either. That's what's impressive to me. Like it, the scope is just—it's all over the place. It's an all amazing right, your, talent to have. Absolutely. Yes. What's what's your favorite TV show? We know you're a sports guy. When you when you're tuning out of sports, what's your favorite go to? All time, it's Seinfeld. Let's yeah, go. I have absolutely nothing Frank. wrong with that. Great choices tonight. I love that show, Frank. All right, and we we all know your uh, your historical prowess in the sports game with trivia and everything. Obviously, growing up, you had to be a big sports guy. Who was your favorite athlete of your childhood? Dan Marino. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. Guy was a stud. Yes, he I'm was. probably the only one who's out of the three of us who actually saw him. When did Marino or when did he retire? Like '98, I think. '99. Okay. There you I, go, I vaguely remember the end of like I remember when he retired, um, but not. I mean, I maybe remember a little bit. I finally I got into football in like '97, '98-ish. So I, I do remember him. Just a little bit, though. But, Frank, that's some great choices. Wendy's, Seinfeld, Miracle. You're killing it today. But, Frank, anything else before we let you go, my man? I think you've been plenty busy lately. You know, we've seen you globetrotting around the eastern seaboard and West Virginia and Michigan. Um, Anything else? Can we get this winter over with, Nick? Can someone get that freaking groundhog? Did it make him change his fucking mind? <laughs> Please. That, this is that groundhog fraud. has got to be the biggest fraud of all time. I hate that thing. Yeah, he's a clown. Absolute clown. <laughs> <laughs> well, Frank, thanks so much for joining us. As always, it's a pleasure. Make sure that you find Frank on Twitter at NJ Tank. Check out his podcast, Allow Me to Be Frank. Um, Frank, as always, man, thanks for joining us. All right, maybe now, sometime soon again. We'll do it. Absolutely. Love it. Love it. Thank you, Frank. Sounds All great. Right. Thank you later. Thank you, as always, to Frank for coming on. It was great to have him. We had a run there uh, about a year ago. Frank was on quite a bit, and he's been a busy man, and it was great to catch up with him. So thank you to Frank the Tank Fleming for coming on. Let's jump right into our media recommendations this week. If you don't remember, it is a podcast, movie, TV show, album, whatever uh, media that we uh, we have found in the last week or so. Um, does anybody want to go first? I don't. <laughs> first, I'll go first. <laughs> uh, I actually have two. Um, I know we try to keep it to one, but I've been kind of all over the place lately. I'm going to start with a podcast, and that is the Hey Babe podcast. And it is, I believe it's Sal from uh, Impractical Jokers and comedian Chris DiStefano. And I found him on TikTok, and they had it it went viral. They had a clip about um, Chris DiStefano is called Tupperware Tupperware. For the for his whole life, and he just found out while they were recording the podcast. Um, it's absolutely hilarious. Two really funny guys. So the Hey Baby podcast, and then on Netflix, from the creator of my favorite television show of all time, The Simpsons, is a show called Disenchantment. Um, just check it out. It's it's solid, man. It's it's what you'd expect from from the creators of The Simpsons. So uh, Disenchantment on Netflix. I'm gonna go with. Uh, it's, I think it's called The Wild Ride with Steve-O. Great choice. It's a podcast, and you, it doesn't even, like, they're not really time-sensitive interviews. They're just really interesting interviews with interesting people. He has a lot of really good people on there. Um, and it's just interesting to hear about his life, too, which has just been insane. Oh, 100%. I mean, they're I gonna, mean, someone's going to make a movie out of uh, Steve-O's life someday. I mean, you've seen all the documentaries. He went to Clown back. College, and then he like got on like skateboarding stuff, and yeah. then Jackass. and Yeah, and he's got some really good guests on there, too. I've listened to like his Tony Hawk and his Dr. Phil interview. And, yeah, great choice, Zach. All right. Well, I got some issues here because you guys know I'm a, I'm a dad. So most of my television consumption, if it's not a game that I'm watching, is uh, – an animated movie, um, some YouTube video series, some, you know, whatever it may be. Um, 
So from that perspective of things, I saw a movie recently for the first time that I'd never seen. And that was, you guys might find crazy, it was Despicable Me. And then that whole series of one, two, and three. Solid movie. Very solid. Very solid. Um, Steve Carell, great job as a, as a group. Um, watching those movies about three times a day right now. So uh, I've got a, got a good grasp on those. Really, uh, really entertaining. On the flip side, though, um, I have found a few more minutes to get into a game that I used to play a lot on Xbox uh, One, and that is NHL uh, in the NHL franchise for me, sports. And uh, boys, that game, uh, what a it, it, yes, it, it's just so so good. It, it hockey is the perfect video game uh, sport because it's just quick. You can have games done in just a few minutes. Uh, you get it's fast paced. There's hitting. There's scoring. There's everything you need. Um, and and they those games are, are phenomenally done. Have you guys played any of those at all? Oh, 100 percent. And I was actually just gonna add, Matt. Like I even play like whatever the one with Tays on the cover was. I still have that for my old 360, and I still mm-hmm. play a franchise mode on that. And I'm telling you, I get as jacked up for goals in that game as I do watching Blackhawks games in person, like on the TV. <laughs> I, I was kind of a geek, like probably like six, seven years ago with with that game. I used to play a lot online. Um, was actually like on a squad that was pretty good in terms of like playing like on those tournaments and stuff. So I haven't played in a few years. Finally Matty Pucks. Into, Matt, finally got back into playing that game again and uh, played a couple games with those guys again too. So that was fun. But that's awesome. Yeah. I gotta get. It's been way too long since I've picked up a newer NHL game, so maybe yeah, I'll it's dabble in that. The graphics stuff. are insane compared to what it was like on the 360 and stuff. That's yeah, awesome. absolutely. Good choices, Maddie. Um, all right, let's get to it. This is our TCF top five of our ultimate fast food meal. Now, we're going to go through this in a snake draft like we always do. Like I said, top five, not top three. And our five things that we have to have uh, – The first thing is obviously fast food, and we decided uh, before the show that it has to have a drive-through, and it can't be like the Chipotle drive-through where you order online and you pick it up at the window. It has to be a legitimate traditional drive-through, and we're going to pick five items, a side, an entree, a drink, a dessert, and a miscellaneous item that could be any of the four above. So I have randomly decided the order, and Zach, you get the first round pick. I'm not worried about somebody taking this, but I'm gonna go with the with the entree. I want the Big Mac. Ugh. I love Big Macs. I'm not saying that I'm just worried about you guys taking that. You're staying true to yourself. You're a Big Mac guy. Well, oh, that's yeah. a that's a, a the Big Mac is a, you know it's a staple in the industry, so it's not like it's a bad pick. It's you a one one. The, it's yeah, one one. You can't fault the pick. Matt, you get pick number two. All right. Well, what a guy! He picks then, the list and he goes last for the side. Yeah, that the people. Zach took Zach took an entree. I've got a zig when you guys zag, so I'm going to take a side. It's going to be the same restaurant, and it's going to be the McDonald's French fry. Um, when it's hot, there's literally probably no food better on the planet. So. Uh, I'm going to take the McDonald's fry as my A little side. inconsistent, I would say, though. Eh. Like I said, when they're hot, my God, they're <laughs> uh, an absolute beauty. I'm going to be true to myself here today. I don't really care about the graphic. I'm going to go with my <laughs> entree, and I'm going the best burger around, and that is a junior bacon cheeseburger from Wendy's. I think that's an easy choice on mine. I probably eat those more than just about anything. Um, Tiny. Tiny. That's more of an appetizer for me. I I don't know. I I will give you that, Matt, because I usually order like three or four of them. Um, Oh, my God. I have, in my my heftier days, I have taken down four Junior Bacon Cheeseburgers. Um, Not so much anymore. I try to not do that. Um, So I'm going to – I'll just – I have to be true to myself. I, I've always loved Junior Bacon Cheeseburgers, and I, I got to be who I am, all right? Um, let's see. My second-round pick, um, 
I'm going to stay at Wendy's. I'm going with my dessert. I'm going with Frosty. Oh, you suck. <laughs> you suck. <laughs> I And I don't care chocolate, vanilla. I don't care. Frosties are delicious. You cannot go wrong. And... All right. Um... All right, for drink, I'm going to uh, I'm going to go to Taco Bell. I'm going to take the uh, Baja Damn Blast. It. Baja Blast is the way to go. It's uh, it's a standalone item at Taco Bell. You can't get it anywhere else unless uh, Mountain Dew randomly throws a few 12 packs at your local grocery store in cans. But outside of that, you can only get it at Taco Bell. It's a little treat when you go there. They do it in the, the blast down too, like a little freezer thing, which is pretty good. But I'm going to stick to just on the rocks, uh, Baja Blast. Well, Matt, I know what I'm getting you for your birthday next year. Um, they make a Baja Blast scented candle that I wow. actually in some wow. sort of Give, uh, sign me up for a hundred. <laughs> Just ship the box to Matt's yeah. house. Send the crate. Thank you. All right, I'm go it. with my side fries from Culver's. I love the fries from Culver's. Crispy ones. Mm. Yum yum yum. The crinkle cut. They have the crinkle cut. Yeah, the crinkle yeah, cut. Oh, that's right. I, I I was trying and to picture my for, for my dessert. I'm going with the shamrock shake. I love the shamrock. Ooh. Shake. Ooh. <laughs> oh, 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 oh man, I didn't see that coming. That's a good pick. That's love a good it. pick. Zach, uh, they've recently said that they're going to do a shamrock and or uh, with Oreo McFlurry. Is that something you're interested in? Yes. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. That's wow. very much. That yeah. Sounds absolutely yeah. Dynamite. Feel that weight I lost coming back. <laughs> All right, I, I I went Taco Bell for uh, for my drink. I'm gonna stay there for my. I want this assigned to my miscellaneous, so I want that pointed out. Miscellaneous. I want the cheesy gordita crunch. It is no question the best item that Taco Bell sells. So cheesy gordita crunch. I can't say I've ever had one. Oh what? I don't think I have. Oh my god, dude! It's like if you go there, I have to get at least one. If not two, but usually definitely one. That's legitimately ninth on my list at Taco Bell. Wow. Wow. They're they're phenomenal. You have a list that long? (laughs) Okay. Again, we we talked about this. I spent a lot of time back in the day at Taco Bell, all right? It was on my way home from work, okay? That's not even like 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 15th on my list. (laughs) I keep it in a Rolodex. Don't ask questions. Uh, (laughs) I'm going to go with my – oh, man, these are tough. There's so much good stuff. Um. All right, I'll do my side, and I am going to do Arby's curly fries. That's the next best fry, in my opinion, after McDonald's. I think that's good. I think so too. Um, you know what? And I'm going to stay true to myself on this one as well. I am going a McDonald's Sprite for my drink. It just tastes different. Hmm. I don't know what it is about McDonald's fountains, but they're just a crispy ass sprite. Yeah, so, I don't hate this. I don't the McDonald's especially, sprite. I need to set a little. All, play, a the little. Coke gets to shine, but the sprite's a good way to go. But you gotta you gotta wait for my situation, Matt. Summer day, middle of July. It's like ninety eight outside. Humidity is like ninety percent. You got the windows down. Nothing better than a crispy sprite. It does. It has some sting to it. Top five. He's, he's, setting the mood, he's setting the mood for a sparkling. I'm just setting the mood. But I will also drink a crispy Sprite in the middle of January. Still no Baja Blast, but... The Sprite, You're right. Don't if, if somebody took Baja Blast from me, McDonald's Sprite would have been my go-to next. I will say that. I will. Baja Blast is a clear number one. I will not disagree with you. Hey. That the, the right and left just met in the middle there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, Maddie, you are up. You have a dessert and an entree left. I think I have dessert, entree, and in... no, oh, yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it, just those last two. Um, man, my entree, I keep going back and forth, so I think I'm going to save it for a round because either way, I'm going to get a good one. Um, for dessert, and I, I feel like I might be getting too uh, too same restaurant heavy, but I'm gonna go back to McDonald's for dessert, and it's going to be the uh, the, the baked apple pie in the uh, cardboard box. 
scorching hot. You bite into it. That's just burns the piss out of your mouth. Um, very good little treat, especially if you uh, end up with a milkshake. Dunk that thing in that vanilla milkshake. Good way to go, by the way. Um, but yeah, apple pie Great choice, Donald. Matt, do you dabble in the the um, the seasonal pies like the strawberries and cream, or um, I think they have like that a- holiday custard one is a little yeah. weird for my, it's a little weird for my taste. Um, I don't like the pumpkin one. I had that one time as well. The strawberry one wasn't bad, but just when it gets, just give me the OG. You know, yeah. give me the apple. And the best part was, and I don't know what it still is. I haven't had one in a while, but they used to be two for a buck. Yeah, so, it's been a while since I've had them, but those things, man, like, my God, when you get one, it's just like, ah. Yep. It's just always the perfect little, little top off. Great choice. Zach, you still have a drink and a miscellaneous left. And you I'm get go the with, uh, McDonald's Coke. I love yeah, that. Yeah, no one's gonna argue that. No one can yep. argue that. And then mis- miscellaneous, a chocolate shake from McDonald's. I just, I don't know. I used just to get those just a, just all a the fastball time. Fastball down the middle. Just a fastball down the middle. Ninety-eight. And just so we're aware that four of five, four of Zach's five picks are from McDonald's. I think so, yeah, I'm greasy. I'm greasy. Big McDonald's Zach, guy. Zach's favorite uh, fast food joint is. Rumor has it that uh, Zach actually chose his house this past summer based on its proximity to the McDonald's in Mendota. I don't I mean, know that much. If we were I doing know. fast food breakfast, McDonald's, my God, it's oh, a runaway. It might take the whole thing. Absolute landslide. Um, for entree, I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go a little more, a little more uppity then, since um, I was debating two. My both of them are still there, but as we said, Zach went heavy McDonald's, so I'm gonna bypass my McDonald's pick. I'm gonna go to Chick Fil A. I'm gonna go with the spicy chicken. Uh, dabble some of that Chick Fil A sauce on that some bitch, and oh my God, do you have yourself a sandwich? Did you say buffalo chicken sandwich? Is that no, what... no, no? The spicy chicken, Chick Fil A. Spicy chicken. Yeah, just the spicy chicken. I'll be honest, not that big of a Chick-fil-A guy. It's it's okay. Ah, uh, that's a wild statement. I just You're I don't have wrong. anything to say about that. It's a it's phenomenal, okay. phenomenal sandwich. It's okay. And and they're very polite there too. That is true. The customer service is, is top, top notch. notch. I'm a big fan. All, All right. Chick-fil-A. To round things up, I'm going to go back to, uh, or I'm actually going to go to Taco Bell, and that is uh, probably my number one menu on the item, and that is a steak quesadilla. It doesn't get any better. It's pretty easy. You're on the cheesy gordita crunch? Are you kidding me? There's steak in it. You have cheese in a chalupa shell. Who are you talking to, bud? You're getting steak from Taco <laughs> Quote, unquote, Bell. steak. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Steak is I prime. didn't say it was USDA prime steak. <laughs> I just said steak. I didn't clarify the cut of it. <laughs> but it's just, it's it's an easy one. It's like three bucks. It gets you through. It, it it's very consistent. That's that's my thing with it. I've I've had steak quesadillas over the last twenty years from there, and I they've all been the same. And then consistency is key. I rip on it, but let's not let's not kid ourselves. I wouldn't kick it out of bed here. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So we will throw this up on Twitter. I've got everybody's picks typed out. Zach, I mean, looking strong, man. You're going to get the, the McDonald's votes, man. I don't hate that. Um, Matt with some great choices. I <laughs> stay, I'm probably going to win. Zach's going to hashtag McDonald's and all of a sudden his all of the graphic. Boop. Yeah, Zach <laughs> somehow has an in at the. Can we make sure we tag Twitter account? Yeah, hey, P. Goy. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Zach's going to end up with like $500 in McDonald's gift cards, and we're all going to be jealous because <laughs> he's just. Yeah. Hey, don't forget, hey. I had a couple of McDonald's items on there myself fries and the apple pie here, uh, gold marches. I think all three of us had at least one item from McDonald's. So. It's the goat. Let's not kid ourselves. I mean, like, you could take all the fast food on the the planet away and McDonald's would still just find a place and it was still just, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Well, that was episode 96 of typical Chicago fans. Like I said, thanks to our guest, Frank Fleming, Frank, the tank for coming on for an interview. Uh, Make sure like we talked about earlier in the podcast that you hashtag Southside Hitmen in either our Twitter posts, Facebook, Instagram, or 
on any of your original posts from those websites for your opportunity to win a 26shirts.com Let the Kids Play shirt that Zach has. We have an XL and a 2X. I'm telling you, they're the most comfortable shirts I own. I, and I'm not even saying that because they're our sponsors. I legitimately just wear their shirts all the time. Um, we all have them. We can all agree. Uh, so make sure you check out their website, 26shirts.com slash Chicago. Use promo code typical Chicago fans at checkout for 15% off your order. They help out good charitable causes in the city. They make great shirts. They help out the podcast. But use hashtag SouthsideHitmen in any of your social media posts over the next week, and we will enter you in a drawing to win a free 26shirts.com shirt. I'm not even a Sox fan, and I'm about to run to my Twitter account and use that hashtag. Just so you know, there is a double I'm a, X. It's a double X. You were looking out for the big boys again tonight, man, and it's just waiting for Everybody them, so. loves free shirts, okay? It's just yeah. a, it's just a, we're, we're programmed that way as human beings, okay? Those are, There's those are fun with it. So too. Let's not kid ourselves. Absolutely. And... Um, like I said, so just hashtag Southside Hitman on any social media post over the next week, and we will enter and do a video for the drawing. Make sure you follow the guys that I'm joined with tonight, Matt at schools underscore zero one, and Zach, of course, at Z Lilia TCF. I am Boomy on Twitter at Boomy TCF. Follow the main page at typical underscore Chicago. Facebook, Instagram, type in typical Chicago fans. Follow those pages. Subscribe to the YouTube page. Subscribe, follow, or follow, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts. Follow us on Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts at. Make sure to follow us there. And thank you for joining us. That was episode 96, our Chris Zorich episode of Typical Chicago Fans. We love you all. Peace.